Hi, I'm Jeff, and on this episode of the JarfCast, I'm taking up slack. Jarf! First of all, shout out to my brother's co-worker who, I heard through the grapevine, was really enjoying my videos and was super bummed when uh, he found out that I stopped making them. So, luckily, my life has kind of settled down and I'm finally able to get back to making videos here in my new home in Arizona! That's right! I got the heck out of Texas. Didn't like it there. Wasn't a fan of the whole Texas thing. Love it here in Arizona. The mountains are beautiful, it's warm, and it's sunny, and I couldn't be happier. So, my brother's co-worker, whose name I can't remember, sure. this one's for you. Okay, so let's get into it. I finally got my multi-material unit, two, from Prusa, and I've had a couple of problems with it. Problem number one, it's frequently throwing errors during printing. Load and unload. I don't know. Maybe something got jostled around by the movers. I'll figure it out more on that later. The other problem I was having was uh, during the filament unload, it would be spit and spool up out of the tubes and that filament didn't really have anywhere to go. And so it was just creating a rat's nest around the spools. That's the problem we're gonna tackle today. So my initial thought was some device that would fit within the spool and maybe be spring loaded and it would load the spring as it loaded filament into the printer, uh, slipping after it got to a certain tension, sort of like uh, one of those little kids toy cars where you put it on the ground, pull it back, let it go and zoof, off it goes. And of course it would unload the spring and drive the filament backwards as the filament was unloaded from the printer. I had all these grand designs including planetary gears with a, a spring in the middle of one of them and a, a ratchet sort of slipping mechanism. It was way too complicated. I said, I don't got time for that. I wanna print, keep it simple. I introduced to you the spool slacker. So the spool slacker is stupidly simple. It's just a spring-loaded arm that lays down and pulls on the filament when it's unloaded and goes back up when the filament's loaded back into the printer. It also came together relatively quickly. So the first thing I did was get some of these springs. These springs are actually meant for power tools like Dremels and demolition hammers. I got them from a website that sells replacement parts for power tools. Uh, I'll include a link in the description if you like. Well, I do like, so I'll go ahead and throw it in there for you regardless of whether you want me to or not. Ha <laughs> ha! Really the hardest part of this was getting the arm length right. I tried it really short a couple of times, didn't take up enough slack, so finally I said eh, I'll just go for broke, print it as large as I can, and that turned out to be the right answer. Um, let's see what else. The screw holes, I initially had them on the inside to reduce the overall footprint, but it was kind of difficult to get it assembled nicely, uh, get all the parts aligned with that small space, so I ditched that idea, put the screws on the outside, and now I can put the whole thing together and just bolt it down, and no more worrying about misalignment. You just feed the filament uh, through the hole in the spool slacker, up over top of the spool, and into the filament tube. My filament tubes are being held in place using this uh, filament tube holder provided by Dr. May Tu. Uh, link to the part in the description and then you just repeat for the other filaments that you want to use and they take care of the rest basically. No more rat's nest. So what can I say? They work as designed. The only downside is that if I leave if I leave the filament installed after I'm done printing, after a day or two the filament will kind of break in a couple of spots. I guess that's just because of the forces of that spring pulling uh, on the filament and just sort of the geometries of my whole spool ecosystem I've got going on. Easy solution. I just unload everything after I'm done printing. It doesn't need to be left in there anyways. Or I guess the other option is I could go ahead and set all the arms up against the filament, but that keeps the springs loaded and I'm not thrilled about that solution. Ah, what you gonna do? Okay, so my experience with the MMU2 has been so far underwhelming. I love the idea, but in practice, 
I just find it to be a little unreliable. So color prints take forever, anyway, far longer than the equivalent single color, single material print would. And that's due to the amount of times that the filament has to be loaded and unloaded. And then with each load and unload, you also have to purge the nozzle to get a clean transition from one color to the next in your print. Now, because of this, multi-material prints take a lot longer and with all the stoppages that require user intervention during load and unload, I'm looking at two to three stops an hour on a 24 hour print. I just don't have the patience for that. Now, Prusa has announced an update to their MMU2 to the i3 Mark III. They're calling it the MMU2S and the i3 Mark III S. They're meant to address some usability and some reliability concerns. Uh, the extruder was too difficult to perform maintenance on, and so what they've done is they've sort of redesigned some things to give you better access to that, as well as redesigned the filament sensor. I love their solution, by the way. Go on their website and look at the uh, blog post on it. It's, in, it's, it's like, uh, what can I say? Simplicity at its best. So they're still using the optical sensor. They're just having a piece of plastic pushed out of the way when the filament's loaded. It's brilliant. They're including a filament buffer in the uh, the upgrade kit. Now, these upgrade kits, they're shipping them to anybody who's already got an MMU2 for free. Thank you, Prusa. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I bought into your ecosystem to begin with. Customer service, uh, it's, it's important. It's probably the most important thing for repeat customers. Because of that, I'm gonna be a repeat customer for a very long time. I digress. This filament buffer is meant to address the exact same thing that the spool slacker addresses, which is what, how do I manage all of this rat's nest of filament that's being generated uh, during my multi-material prints. I don't know how it's gonna work with my setup, if it's going to integrate well into the cabinet that I built. And on the other hand, there's just something kind of whimsical about these arms moving up and down as the print continues. It's, uh, it's kind of hypnotizing, I really like it. I think I'm gonna reprint most of these pieces in different colors uh, so that <laughs> it can really up the whimsy factor. So yeah, maybe I'll post some pictures of that later. We'll see. Anyways, once I get my MMU2 update kit, my Mark 3S upgrade, whatever, I'll do another video. I'll go through the MMU and see if anything got knocked around by the movers. I don't think so, but you never know. I'll clean all the debris out of it, any filament dust that it's ground up through the time I've spent trying to MMU print. We'll see, maybe I can't get it working. Maybe I can. Uh, either way, I'll let you know how I find the reliability of it after I've kind of stripped everything down and re, you know, seeded everything, make sure that it's not user error. Yeah, because you never know. Well, that's it for this episode. It was uh, kind of a short one, but I'm trying out some new things. I've got a new studio here, uh, new lighting setup. I've already had to record all of my A-roll for this twice now uh, because I didn't have the lighting quite right and the green screen looked like crap, so... Yay. Uh, it's already taking long enough, I guess is what I'm trying to say, and I just want to wrap it up, get it out. So, little mini update. If you want to uh, build your own spool slacker, I will leave links below to uh, my parts files on Thingiverse and to the spring that I used. Uh, that's on, I think, e-replacement parts. It's not an affiliated link, so I don't get anything out of directing traffic to them. With that, uh, I hope to see you back here next time on The Jarfcast.